rude There's something this year that's not smelling good There's a fight between Nicola Sturgeon and Alex Salmon That with stare stickling a fish Internal warfare, no sign of Voltaire As hypocrites in England sit there taking the fish Hooray for Hollywood It's kicking off for the neighbourhood a double act that's more fun than the crankies You wet your panties, unless we've misunderstood Nicola tried her luck, cos Alec liked to kiss Hooray for Hollywood! Hooray for Hollywood! No decent outcome that's remotely good All in the name of future independence Or just for vengeance for a place in the history books She's unrepentant, he's a defendant It's not a beauty contest judging by our looks Hooray for Hollywood Could make a movie out in Hollywood Who wants to bet the procurator fiscal Is getting wistful, makes the time of brave heart look good Like Nick Sarkozy, Van Darby Dozy Hooray for Hollywood Good evening, you're watching The Hughes at 10 with me, the gorgeous Hugh Edwards. Why? Because I'm simply the best, that's why. Woof. The headlines. In response to the revelations in Harry and Meghan's Oprah Winfrey special on Sunday, the Queen has placed a blanket ban on all royal interviews. This comes as a disappointment to Buckinghamshire CID, who hoped to interview Prince Andrew later in the week. Oh, hello. Uh, Mr. Matt Hancock? Yes? Excellent. I'm your surgeon. Are you ready for your operation, Mr. Hancock? Uh, yes, I, I think so. Jolly good. Uh, now, I have to tell you that due to cuts and constraints made by the pandemic, I'm afraid we can only remove 1% of your appendix. Pardon? Yes, yeah, disappointing, isn't it? I, I don't know. It's all to do with Covid, I think. Alas, our hands are tied, which incidentally is how I'll be doing the procedure today. And uh, we'll only be able to give you 1% of your blood transfusion. But, but, but won't I need more than that to replace what I lose? A pint? What? Sorry, just a little Tony Hancock reference there. Look, I, 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 I'm not sure about this. Well, I'm afraid, Mr Hancock, if you don't have the operation, your appendix will burst. And I wouldn't want that on my conscience. After all, we are all in this together. But if you're only removing 1%, won't well, it burst anyway? Well, perhaps you should have thought of that before you chose to have one. Sorry? Apology accepted. Oh. Now, uh, we're going to administer okay. the anaesthetic. Oh, uh, but only 1% of it. What? I know, it's this wretched pandemic. But th the chap in the bed next to me said he got it all. <laughs> ah, yes. But he didn't spaff 44 billion on a failed track and trace system that didn't work, did he? <laughs> now, speaking of which, I thought I'd actually use it to locate your appendix. Mm, good old Circo. All right, let's hope I don't cut into the wrong thing, eh? <laughs> Scalpel! <laughs> this week on Hove Island, Dyspraxia and Mooncup are catching up on Zoom. Oh, yeah, 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 well, I for one am totally going to start. Oh, yeah, yeah, toots, toots. I mean, it's just not natural. Not natural at all. And people get terrible side effects. Very bad. You feel totally wiped out afterwards. Completely. And what for? I mean, you only need another one in a few months anyway. Exactly. Thank you. Well, at least with the salons closed, though, no one could get one anyway. Get what? Well, you know, their bikini line done. Oh, no, no, sweetie. I said anti-vaxxing. Oh! <laughs> I wonder why your eyes watered when I mentioned the Brazilian strain. <laughs> if you think our Rishi is a little dishy, careful what you wish he when the deck comes in. Here on working masses, protect up our classes, putting up our taxes when the deck comes in. Increase VAT, double the CJT, take over from you or me when the debt comes in. 
Work till you're ready, die first, ideally no burden you'll be when the debt comes in. Grabbing old age pension from his daddy's mansion, showing no compassion when the debt comes in. Those with loads of money have no care or worry, they will not be touchy when the debt comes in. Still think this is Rishi, just wake up and you see paying you and me are when the debt comes in. If you think my story is a little gory, never trust a Tory when the debt comes in. A good week for Greek archaeology as they've now the funds to buy back ancient Greek antiquities stolen by the United Kingdom. A bad week for Prince Philip as no one's told him he could be sitting behind a glass case in a museum in Athens by the end of the week. My fellow Americans, now I've had a lot of questions about my actions lately. Now some people are saying, hey President Joe, if you're bombing Syria, why ain't you bombing Saudi Arabia? <laughs> and that's a good question. It sounded like a swell idea and I asked my intelligent people, I mean intelligence people, to get all my ducks lined up in a row for me, just like the picture. Now, they made me these lovely briefings to explain the situation. Now even though the Crown Prince had a man murdered on foreign soil, they shelled the 9-11 attackers, and I really, really wanted to. Apparently, we can't bomb Saudi Arabia. They've got a lot of oil, they buy American weapons, and have huge amounts of money invested in the United States. Now, we can bomb Syria because they don't. Yeah, glad we cleared that up. What are you gonna do? Yeah. Hello my loves, it's me, your Auntie Vox, back again to sort your problems and address your concerns. Now to our first letter. Dear Auntie Vox, I'm in a bind. I used to run a major Scottish political party. And after I quit, I was accused of sexual assault. My legal fight with the Scottish Government was put on the back burner while I was prosecuted. And I'm sure my successor pulled strings to make that happen. <gasps> What do I do about the high-level conspiracy that threatened to ruin my reputation? Yours, livid in Linlithgow. Well, livid, I think you've definitely got the wrong end of the caber here. Your former party is sitting pretty in the polls ahead of May's elections. Your success has got a strong approval rating and support for Scottish independence has never been higher. The public schism caused by your case is the only pebble in your lock. Meanwhile, every powerful group from the UK government to the Nectar Card people are doing everything they can to make this tear your party apart and derail your plans for independence. Now the SNP are the only ones around aren't to get you. If I were you, I'd go off and toss a cable, have a whiskey and watch Outlander till it's all blown over. By the way, Outlander is about a Scottish civil war as well, but with sexier protagonists. <laughs> Good luck with the cable tossing! <laughs> Vaccine passports are already raising a lot of questions. Civil liberty campaigners want to know if the data is safe, police want to know if they can be faked, and Nigel Farage wants to know if they're blue. Australian airline Qantas is hoping to boost business by offering tourists mystery flights where they are whisked off to an unknown destination. This has brought threats of legal action for plagiarism from Irish airline Ryanair, who have been doing this for years. Cause our checks are imprecise Don't know where you live I suppose we'll pay the price Be what you left You born in a flight And fly through the air you went You know you something special It's a brand new barrier He came from and he dodged a travel ban And now he is spreading COVID throughout England He's still the headlines and we're searching where we can For Rio, Rio and we haven't got a plan
I'm the great abstainer I'm to left That's a yarn Out of touch Do I care Not much To the right Of the great Genghis Khan He's quite a good fellow actually I'm used to being Indecisive For my hesitancy There's no cure Wake up or make my mind up. Then again, sometimes I'm not sure. They must speak my name, which I can't believe. I grind my teeth when they call me Keith. Oh, yes, I'm the great abstainer. Am I red? Am I blue? You can't tell Ooh. To appear Tory Is by policy In hindsight You'll think so as well Abstaining Is what I do So Well I'm forensic, you know. Good evening. You're watching Fox News. I'm Ann Anker. Breaking news from Englandshire concerning one of our colleagues at the BBC. We now go over live to St. Bartholomew's Hospital in Londonshire with our royal correspondent, Chad Valet. Hi, Ann. I'm here at St. Bartholomew's where our colleague, the BBC's royal correspondent, Nicholas Witchell, was admitted earlier today. He's collapsed from what's been a very stressful time for him, Anne. He's had the worry of Prince Philip going into hospital. He's had to come to terms with the scandal involving Prince Andrew. And the straw that finally broke him was our Prince Harry and his wife, Meghan the Duchess of California, being interviewed by Oprah and not him. And of course, that's all occurring under the everlasting cloud that one day Charles will ascend the throne. Indeed, Anne. No one worries about the royal family more than Nicholas Witchell. And to add insult to injury, uh, when he came home from work, he found his wife had been cheating on him. That's terrible, Chad. Although looking at him, understandable. So what happened with his wife? Well, Anne, uh, he came home and found her watching The Crown on her secret <gasps> Netflix account. Oh, my God. On the ambulance journey to the hospital, he called the Queen herself and begged her to fill in for him whilst he's off sick. He wouldn't trust anyone else to do the job. So you've spoken to him, Chad. Uh, did he say anything else? Yes, Anne. Uh, he wasn't happy about going to St. Bartholomew's. He said he'd be much happier in a royal hospital and asked if he could be transferred. And was he? Uh, yes, Anne. Uh, they moved him to a private room. Was that to reduce the risk of him catching COVID? Uh, no, and uh, to prevent other patients from punching him in the face. The doctors have now given him a light drip feed of cute photographs of the royal great-grandchildren to keep him sedated. Uh, now, Chad, given the BBC's charter of unbiased reporting, how does the BBC justify paying him to be the BBC's royal correspondent? They don't, Anne. He pays them. <laughs> that explains it. Okay, thanks, Chad. You've been watching Fox News. I've been Anne Anchor. Good night. <laughs> Ducks. <laughs>The government have released details of how to make a claim if you're forced into self-isolation, although they have already rejected a claim dating back to 2012 from a Mr Julian Assange. Local council elections are still to go ahead on Thursday the 6th of May as planned, but it may be several days before the results are announced, although officials say it will still be perfectly safe for Labour activists to feel dejected on the night. And now for our next letter. Dear Anti-Vax, I noticed when Prince Philip was transferred between hospitals, he was surrounded by umbrellas. Ooh. But when he was brought back, there wasn't a brolly in sight. The paper said it was just for his privacy.
but what does he have to hide? Yours, suspicious in Surrey. Well, suspicious, you have every right to be. Three umbrellas and not a drop of rain in sight. Very odd that, isn't it, for just one person? Well, you know, I say one person. Everybody knows that the Prince is one of the famed lizard people that my beloved David Icke oh, bless him, has spoken about. Now, I reckon the umbrellas were used to shield his reptilian skin from view. Perhaps if the world could see this evidence and finally embrace the truth, humanity would finally be able to live up to the true potential of inventing a Prosecco that never goes flat. <laughs> truth to power. <sighs> but also, get well soon, Your Highness. Oh, bless. Right, well, what? No, come on, we've already there bad books for saying the Queen is queuing on. God, don't need any more enemies. God, chuffy neck. <laughs>
I feel so lonely While to this hotel I'm confined Where's the phone channel, baby? Was an ugly duckling. <laughs>